Coming up on Dare to Love, the Islamic call to prayer is heard daily by millions around the world. Why do Muslims pray this way, and how does it affect the way Christ followers witness to their Muslim friends and neighbors? Samuel will explore all aspects of the prayer ritual Muslims follow and talk with a special guest about his experience with Islamic prayer while in an Islamic country. All this and more today on Dare to Love. Now here's Samia. Billions of prayers are recited every day by Muslims all over the world. If you've ever visited a Muslim country, the call to prayer is the first thing you'll hear before the crack of dawn, reminding you that prayer is of utmost importance in Islam. Hi, I'm Samia Johnson, bringing you a new way to think about the Muslims you know. Our team went to the streets with this question. How many times a day do you pray? Let's watch what people had to say. Yeah, probably about three times a week, two times a week. Um, in the morning, I can pray at night. That's about it right there, sir. I just, early in the morning at night. David said he prayed seven times a day, you know. And I, I guess I think Daniel, he prayed three times, so. I pray in the morning at night, mainly. I don't pray a lot, but I pray and pray that God will be done in every situation. Uh, I would say four. How many times a day would I say I pray? Uh, twice. Um, as many as necessary. Just depends on what's going on that day, but I try to probably at least five times a day. Obviously, people pray different amounts of time in a day. Some don't even pray at all. You might already know that Muslims must pray five times a day. Each prayer is named after the specific time of day it must be performed. The first prayer is Fajr, before sunrise. Zuhr is at midday. Asr is right before sunset. Maghrib is after sunset. And Aisha is the fifth prayer in the late evening. Prayer is one of the five pillars or practices that each Muslim must perform. In some countries, extreme Muslims advocate death for failure to observe this pillar. Devout Muslims make sure not to miss performing their prayers at the specified times. But if they miss it because of work or any other reason, they must make it up as soon as they can. Let us remember here that Muslims work hard to please their God, and most of them are sincere. They seek Him earnestly and genuinely through what they have been directed to do. Our living God does not leave them without revealing His true character to them, sometimes through visions and dreams, other times through reading the Bible or through a true Christ follower who witnesses to them. You might know that Muslims have to face Mecca when they pray. Interestingly, before that, Muhammad had commanded his followers to pray towards Jerusalem, the prayer direction of the Jews, but then repealed this and told them to pray towards Mecca. The reason for this change is that the Jews did not accept Muhammad as a prophet, which he was hoping would happen. The Quran records the reaction of the people to this change in the second surah, verses 142 to 145, where Allah calls these people fools, thus confirming what Muhammad has decided is best. Congregational prayer is essential for every Muslim man. The day of congregation is on Friday, where Muslims go to pray in the mosque at noon. But even during the other days, Muhammad said that praying in the mosque with other Muslims brings 25 times more rewards than praying alone. Here I'm reminded of what our Lord Jesus Christ told us about prayer in the book of Matthew. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Stay tuned. Samuel will be right back after this short break. Why do Muslim women cover their heads? Do all Muslims really have to pray in Arabic, even if they don't speak Arabic? 
But the more you look into Islam, the more questions you'll likely have. Get all of your questions answered by Samia right here on Dare to Love. Just email your questions to ask at daretolove.tv. Ask at daretolove.tv. Learn more about our ministry on our website, daretolove.tv. You'll find a number of helpful free resources, including online books and articles, as well as our radio and television programs. And why not check out our online store with all of the tools you need to get started reaching out to Muslims in your neighborhood. And feel free to contact us with your comments and questions. We'd love to hear from you. It's all on our website, daretolove.tv, daretolove.tv. You might have seen a Muslim kneeling on a small embroidered rug. It's called a sajada or prayer rug. Prayer rugs are not universally used by Muslims, nor specifically required in Islam, but they have become a traditional way for many Muslims to ensure the cleanliness of their place of prayer and to create an isolated space. Here's a sajada which I bought from a Muslim grocery store. As you notice, the designs are often geometric, floral, arabesque, or uh, may depict Islamic landmarks, such as this one having the image of Al Kaaba, so that it would help the worshiper know where to stand on the rug while facing Mecca. After prayer, the rug is immediately folded or rolled and put away for the next use. This ensures that the rug remains clean because cleanliness during prayer is of utmost importance for the prayer to be accepted by Allah. Some Muslims, mostly devout patriarchs, perform additional form of prayers offered as a gift to Muhammad and his daughter Fatima. They are called tasbih, which means praise. They use a masbaha, such as this one, that's a string of beads to count while reciting three phrases 33 times each. Subhanallah, which is glory be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, and Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater. Now, it's highly recommended to recite this tasbih after each of the five daily prayers. Every aspect of the Muslim's prayer has rewards if practiced correctly and penalties if ignored. For example, standing while praying has a full reward. Sitting has half, while lying down gets only a quarter of the reward. In addition, prayers will be rejected by Allah for any one of these reasons. Let's watch. In Islam, your prayers are unacceptable if you forget to recite Al-Fatiha, which is the first chapter of the Quran, forget to keep your hands away from your hips during prayer, and if you look towards the sky, your eyesight will be taken away. Your prayers will certainly be void if a woman, a monkey, a donkey, or a black dog pass by you. Of course, you can never pray before washing up to purify your body. But if during prayer you burp or pass gas, you must ritually purify yourself again. And remember that you must be fully clothed for your prayer to be accepted by Allah. At Call of Love Ministries, we want to thank our Dare to Love viewers who continue to give generously to help Syrian and Iraqi refugees in their time of need. Through our partner churches in Lebanon and Jordan, your donations have provided food, medicine, clothing, winter blankets, and cleaning supplies to thousands of displaced people. More importantly, the Word of God is transforming the lives of these people. Many Muslims are coming to know Christ as Lord and Savior because of the love shown to them through the refugee centers. شكراً لهالناس بس إن كان ساعدونا بكاسة الحليب بحبة الرز بحبة السكر اللي وصلت لنا في البطانيات اللي دفعوا فيها عالم اللي ناس كان ما عندها تنام اللي دخلت الشتاء وبلشت تبكي أنا الوحدة أنا مني أنا أجرت بيت فاضي كان أعطي الدوشة اللي عندي لولادي وأنا كنت أنام على بنشفت الحمام 
وعن جد يثبتونا ايش قد الرب يحبنا الله يحبنا عم يفرجي محبته لنا من خلال هالاشخاص New refugees come daily to these centers and their needs are great Please consider giving a monthly donation $30 a month just a dollar a day will make an eternal impact Join us in reflecting God's love to Iraqi and Syrian refugees Call us now at 832-220-4040 or visit our website daretolove.tv daretolove.tv It must be hard on Muslims to keep up with all the specific minute instructions so that their prayers are accepted by Allah. Surprisingly, women play a major role in nullifying the Muslim's prayer, as you've heard. Not only this, but there are specific guidelines as to how and where a Muslim woman can pray. I will mention some main gu guidelines so you'll get an idea. If one woman and one man are praying, she should stand behind him, not next to him. In the mosque, women pray in the back rows behind the men or in a separate room. A woman's body is awra, meaning unclean and brings shame. Therefore, she must be totally covered during prayer except for her face. The scholars of the Standing Committee for Issuing Fatwas or Doctrines said it is not obligatory for women to offer any of the five obligatory prayers in congregation, and their prayer in their houses is better for them than praying in the mosques. But if she wants to pray in the mosques, she should not be prevented from doing so on condition that she observes proper Islamic etiquette when going out and when praying. By going out fully covered, not wearing perfume and praying behind the men. I personally consider this degrading to any woman, especially when 600 years before Islam, Christ Jesus gave back women their honor and equality after Adam and Eve's disobedience corrupted that. We read in many places in the Bible that after Jesus' crucifixion, the disciples, both men and women, gathered in one room to pray. And the first century Christians continue to do that regardless of gender, race, or age. So prayer in Islam is wrapped in countless threads of minute details of do's and don'ts that I've presented in a general way. But it does not stop here. There are additional preparations a Muslim must do before each of the daily five prayers. Al-wudu, in English, ablution. Ablution is the purification of the body by washing it with water. The Prophet of Islam is the example followed, and several passages in the Hadith give many details on how he washed before praying. Cold water is used in all seasons of the year, and if water was not found, say while traveling in the desert, sand can replace water. Al-Wudu is the purification ritual before every prayer. A Muslim begins every action with the intention to cleanse himself for prayer for the sake of Allah. He then says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful. He washes his hands three times, making sure the water reaches between the fingers and all over the hands. He brings a handful of water to his mouth and rinses it thoroughly three times. He sniffs water into his nose three times to clean it, using his right hand to bring up the water and his left hand to expel it. He then washes his entire face three times. Next, he washes his arms up to the elbows three times but must start with his right arm first. He uses his wet hands to wipe over his head once, from front to back and front again. He then uses his wet fingers to wipe the inside and outside of his ears once. He washes his feet, starting with the right foot, up to the ankles three times. Lastly, he dries off and says the creed of Islam in Arabic. I witness that there's no God but Allah, and I witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Now, the Muslim is ready to recite his prayers.
I'm glad you're with us today, uh, Pastor Dennis. So did you actually perform al-wudu uh, in the same way? Yes, we did. We were a group and we went and were led through it by a Muslim prayer leader. Wow. So uh, tell me where you were uh, and why did you do it? We were visiting Indonesia and mm -hmm. we were in the central part of Java mm -hmm. and we were uh, invited to visit a mosque and to learn about the prayer ritual and mm -hmm. uh, to experience it ourselves. We just saw in a documentary, you know, how the Muslims uh, do uh, the ablution or the cleansing. but. Is this what happened with you? Yep, we came and uh, we were met. A man met us and another a woman met the women and we went in the different entrances and we went in and uh, washed uh, our feet and uh, our hands and our ears and our nose and our eyes wow. and uh, our mouth uh, three times and mm -hmm. spitting it out. And uh, mm -hmm. it took, uh, I'm guessing, around uh, five to ten minutes. Yes. And uh, it, f it, was, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. I... I really felt, it actually felt like slavery. Yes. Because we were being taught at the same time that until we do this, uh -huh. our prayers are not heard. So you were doing it to learn more about what Muslims uh, do during prayers or were you trying to befriend them, build bridges? What was the cause? Yes, we were visiting uh, friends that uh, minister to Muslims in yes. Indonesia and they have built relationships. Yes. And so we wanted to be educated and uh, also the Muslims wanted to ask us questions. Oh, so okay. it was an exchange. So the first part was to go in and pray yes. and experience that. And then the second part was to come back outside and to have a discussion. Yes. It, was really, it was really very positive and they were very curious. Mm. Yes. I'm sure some of our viewers might be asking, why would Muslims practice prayer in this way? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they are commanded to do it when it's so complicated. And uh, one reason I think I'm going to quote here from the Hadith, uh -huh. what Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, promised or explained why they need to do it, all the cleansing. And he said, if there was a river at the door of any one of you and he took a bath in it five times a day, would you notice any dirt on him? They said, not a trace of dirt would be left, he added. That's the example of the five prayers with which Allah blots out evil deeds. So he explained it as washing, it's cleansing. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I know with us and with what the Bible says about prayer, this is not the case. It's very different. Right. So tell me um, the difference between uh, how Muslims pray or other religions even who pray for forgiveness of sins in a way and uh, the Christian faith and why we pray. Right. You know, the bath reminded me of the, the night before Jesus died and Peter wanted to go have a whole bath. Yes. And Jesus said, no, once you trust me, you're, you're, you're cleansed. You've, your sins are forgiven. And now occasionally you need to wash your feet, meaning occasionally you need to confess your sin yes. and that will be cleansed. Mm. And so... You know, he, he says, look, come into the private place. Mm. Don't stand on the streets and make all fancy rituals, but close your door and come to your father who's in secret mm. and then talk to your father. Mm. So I, I think it's very different. Very different. Yeah. In, in Islam, uh, there's another quote from the Hadith where Muhammad says that um, whoever prays the two cool prayers, which is the afternoon and the dawn, will go to paradise. So prayer in Islam is a means of salvation. Mm -hmm. um, do you agree with that? Well, uh, I, you know, I understand the temptation mm -hmm. in every religious system yes. to work our way to please God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says uh, the unique thing about Jesus is God will do for us what is necessary for salvation, which yes. is the cross. And so I, I think of, you know, the, the time of day is irrelevant because Jesus and the apostles taught us to pray without ceasing. Yes. So I have had conversations with Muslim where mm -hmm. they will say, I pray five times a day and I'll say, that's really good. But in the Bible, that wouldn't be sufficient. We're told we're supposed to pray without yeah. ceasing. Uh, tell me about actually the main reason why we pray in the Bible. And I know Jesus was, is the first example 
how he prayed to the Father. Right. And, and we, we pray, uh, and it's very interesting that they, they do the supplication to, directly to Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, we pray uh, out of a relationship. We pray because we're family. Mm -hmm. We pray because uh, we have a father mm -hmm. who loves us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, he's a king and he's very majestic, but he also invites us into relationship through Jesus. Yes. So Jesus is our older brother mm -hmm. uh, and he brings us to the Father yes. and then the Father in Christ adopts us mm -hmm. as sons. Mm -hmm. So it would be absurd to speak to a king in a, in a language of daddy mm -hmm. uh, or a familiar mm -hmm. friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, people would not do that. I would not do that. I've seen the Queen of England and you, you have to bow and of all course. that. Protocols. Ho however, however, in the kingdom, there are people who can call the Queen mummy and there are people who can call the King daddy. Mm -hmm. And who is that? That's their children. Their children. So we have this beautiful privilege that he's a king and he's majestic, but he's also Abba. Amen. Father. Amen. So this is the way we converse with him is through prayer. Mm -hmm. And prayer is not only requests or repentance, but also a way to, of thanksgiving and just to also hear his voice. So it's two ways yes. versus one way. Yes. Right. And I imagine that very much as uh, an astronaut or even the technician filming us today mm -hmm. with the ear headset and a microphone. And we walk through life as if we have that on and we hear him. Yes. And he's directing us, you know, visit this person, she's sick. Yeah. He's giving us a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He's directing us and encouraging us. Mm -hmm. and, and we receive, as Jesus did, mm -hmm. the day's marching orders. Yes. What are we doing today? The family business. Mm -hmm. And the father says, here's what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. And I go, great. I woke yes. up this morning and I said, we're doing this interview today. And I, it's the father's business. Yes. And uh, so he was directing yes. even what scripture I should share today. Amen. And it's a way of life. Prayer without ceasing. It's a continuous conversation with our heavenly father. Yes. Receiving and giving at the same time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Would you like to share a verse from the Bible? Yeah, I hear I, uh, that. Uh, I God felt the one. Lord. Yeah, I felt the Lord this morning just... Uh, directing me to Galatians uh, chapter, the end of chapter three and the beginning of chapter four. Mm -hmm. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What I'm saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery mm -hmm. under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Mm -hmm. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Amen. Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. And we are heirs in the family business. Amen. What beautiful and simple words that summarizes the gospel of Jesus Christ and why he came mm -hmm. so that we can be the adopted children of God. Yes. And, and I that pray. defines the prayer relationship. Yes, yeah. it does define the conversation, yeah. which is the prayer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Would you please uh, close uh, in prayer so that maybe the Lord would open more eyes and more hearts sure. of our beloved Muslim brothers and sisters so that they would understand prayer in a different way. All right. I'd be glad to do that. Uh, Father uh, Abba, I just uh, lift up to you now um, those other descendants of Abraham, um, our distant friends, uh, the Muslims, and I ask, Lord, that you would open their eyes uh, to the truth, uh, Lord, that uh, they can become sons uh, in Christ. And Lord, I also lift up those uh, that uh, are Christians to fully realize that uh, God is looking for a, a constant daily conversation mm. and that we would 
walk in this spirit of sonship together. And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you for being with us today. It's been a we real sure privilege. We should have you another time. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. It's a real privilege. Bless you. Thank you. The Bible has been corrupted. Jesus never claimed to be God. Christians worship three gods. Wow. When faced with one of these statements from a Muslim neighbor, where do you find the answer? One God, One Message is your resource for taking on all of the objections that Muslims have with Christianity. Author P.D. Bramson expertly reveals the love of Christ in each and every answer. One God, One Message speaks directly to Muslims and is a wonderful tool for evangelism. Get your copy of One God, One Message. Call us at 832-220-4040. 832-220-4040. To order online, visit our website, daretolove.tv, daretolove.tv. After watching today's program, you might have questions or comments about what you've heard. We encourage you to write to us. Also, if you'd like to watch this episode again or share it with your Bible study group, send us an email requesting this episode. Its title is Prayer. We will send you a DVD copy for any amount the Lord puts on your heart to give to the work of God through this ministry. Covering the subject of prayer in Islam took all the time we have for today, so I won't be able to address any questions, but make sure to watch next time as we learn together how to understand what Muslims believe and how they practice their religion in order to eventually reach them with the message of Christ, who is the only way, the truth, and the life. Until then, I dare you to love your Muslim neighbors. Thank you for watching Dare to Love. In learning about true Islam, we can protect our children from the westernized version of Islam and with Christ's help, boldly witness to our Muslim neighbors. If you've been blessed by what you've heard today, we would like to give you the opportunity to partner with us. Call the number on your screen right now or visit our website. Dare to Love is a production of Call of Love Ministries, a Christian nonprofit organization. All contributions are tax deductible. Donate online at calloflove.org. That's calloflove.org. Or call us at 832-220-4040. That's 832-220-4040. You can also send a check to Post Office Box 498698, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45249, USA. Together, we can make an impact in God's kingdom. Meet us here next week as we continue to unveil what Islam teaches its followers, how Muslims practice their faith, and what we as Christians should know as we try to witness to our Muslim neighbors. Dare to Love is made possible by the friends and partners of Call of Love Ministries.